What's going on everyone? This is Matt with Motion VFX and I have a brand new exciting pack to share with you today. This is M Style Cinematic. Perfect way to start off the new year. It's kind of useful for all different kinds of projects. I can't wait to show you. Let's go ahead and jump into Resolve and take a look. All right, so after you've installed M Style Cinematic from the M Installer application, it can be located up here in your effects panel. We've included nine video transitions here, 10 typography presets, as well as 13 overlay effects. And we also included five different LUTs. So if you hop over here to the color page and open up the LUTs panel under Motion VFX, you will see M Style Cinematic here with all five LUTs. You can simply double click and that will get applied to the selected node. And each of these give you this really nice cinematic color scheme to your footage. I ended up using Cinescape for the majority of the shots. I just really liked the warmth that this LUT gives the footage. And if a LUT is coming on too strong, you can always go to the key panel right down here and change the gain. So I might try something like 60% and that's looking really nice. All right, so let's hop back over here to the edit page. Now I'm just gonna come up to toolbox, search for M style cinematic, and this will just pull up all of the effects, transitions and titles all in one spot. So let's start off with these effects here. Now, if you have your hover scrub preview enabled, you can just simply hover over each of these effects to get an idea for how they will look. You can see this anamorphic effect kind of stretches the footage out and blurs the edges a little bit. Blurring kind of does the same thing, but this one actually has a little bit more control. Let me actually show you. So if I grab this and drop it onto this shot here, for example, you can see my edges are a little bit softer and the center here is still in focus. Here's what the shot looks like without any effects. Now over here in the inspector, you can adjust the strength of that blur right here. And you can also control where the blur takes place. I like to use the fusion overlay, which you can access right here in the drop down menu. So I'm just going to select fusion overlay. And now you get this green on screen control. So this control point here is where the blur is at its strongest. And this one in the center is where it's in focus. So you can kind of see this gives you this tilt shift type of effect. And you can also change the gradient type here. So if we switch this to something like radial, this will create a circular blur. So if we wanted to, you know, kind of isolate a specific object in the frame and sort of soften out everything else to draw the attention, it's very easy to do that. You also have linear, which will just create a blurred wipe. So it goes from sharp to blurry and you get this really realistic natural fall off. So this could be a great way to overlay some text. So let me just turn this off, for example, and show you if I just try to put this lower third somewhere on top of my frame here, and I'm going to use the fusion overlay again, just to kind of position this right over here. You can see it's very difficult to read. So this would limit my options of where I could place this. But what if I really wanted this to be on this side? Maybe I have a whole sequence where all of my titles roughly appear in the same location, but on this particular shot, it's causing some conflict. What I could do is use this blurring effect and I can use that linear wipe to kind of soften out the area of the frame where that text will appear. So it's not so conflicting with the background, maybe even lower that blur amount just a little bit like this. And that's just going to make it a lot easier to make out what that text says. We also have a dream vision effect. Now, if I drop this onto that same shot, you can see it kind of duplicates my shot and blurs it, adds some nice chromatic aberration, kind of looks like it's a dream. And over here, you can see now I have two effects because these are all stackable. You can open and close various effects just by clicking on their name. You can also use these up and down arrows to reorder the way that these are stacked together. You can see I've got my main effects controls, so I can kind of position the effect and change the scale if I need to. And then we have two independent clones right here. So you can turn them off to kind of get an idea of what each one is doing. So the second one creates a very soft blur and the first one creates the chromatic aberration. And of course, each of these have their independent controls so you can fine tune and get the exact kind of dreamy type of effect that you're after. Next up, I want to show you this flare effect. This one is really cool. So. Similar to the clone effect, this one has two independent flares. Now each of these have 10 different flares. So you have a whole bunch of different combinations of lens flares. So if we kind of cycle through these, you can see how each of them will look. Most of these will give you kind of an anamorphic lens flare, 
but not all of them. Some of them will give you a really soft glowing orb. So super easy way to get this realistic lens flare effect right here on the edit page. We also have a letterbox effect here. And if I drop this onto the footage, you can see it just crops the footage into this kind of cinematic aspect ratio. Now you'll notice over here in the inspector, there are some in and out animation controls as with most of the effects in this pack. But you can see even if I have these toggled on, we don't really see anything change. And that is because this particular shot has already been edited. You can see the beginning of the clip actually starts way over here. And that's also where these animations will live. So you can see if I move this up to a track above and drag the beginning back to its original starting place, you can see now we do actually have that animation. But what if I want this to actually have this particular duration here and I want this cut like that? Well, one easy way that you can control the in and out animations of effects like this is by using an adjustment clip over the particular section of your timeline that you want to affect. So I'm just gonna drop an adjustment clip here and then now drag this letterbox effect right onto that adjustment clip. And let's turn those in and out animations back on. And now you can see it animates in and animates out. And what's great about this is I can actually impact more than one shot all at the same time. And with this particular letterbox effect, you also have this scale control. So you can control how much of the frame gets cropped in. And now that we have this additional crop, we could even click on the shots beneath this letterbox effect and then come up here and adjust the Y position because now we have a little bit more vertical room to reposition these shots within this new aspect ratio. And I like to have my transform setting on right here. This will show me where the edge of the frame is. And this way I can kind of see when I can go too far. So maybe something about right here is good for this shot. So just a really easy way to get this cinematic aspect ratio. Now you can also control the color. So maybe if you wanted like a white letterboxing effect, very easy to do that right here. I'm just gonna leave mine black. And this shot will actually work really well to demonstrate this refraction effect. So if I drop this right on to the shot, you can see it makes the footage look even more like it's underwater. It kind of displaces the footage in this really unique pattern here. And over here in the inspector, we can control where that displacement happens using the center control like this. You can also adjust the seethe to kind of get a slightly different pattern depending on the shot. So in this case, I want both of my subjects to be clear so I can kind of adjust the position as well as the seethe to make sure that the face is still in focus while the rest of it is kind of getting this nice underwater blurring effect. And another nice thing about this effect is all of the parameters are keyframeable. So I could, for example, add a keyframe for the seethe at the very beginning of the shot. And then let's go to the very end here and just move that seethe a little bit like this. And that will just add to this underwater feeling because now the displacement texture is also animating and flowing like water. All right, so let's move on to titles. Now, again, if you have your hover scrub preview, you can simply hover over each of these titles to see how they look. And these are pretty self-explanatory. You can, of course, adjust the title, the text, the font, and that kind of thing. I do want to show you this credit here. Now, let's just put this at the very end of our timeline. And over here in the inspector, you've got your header controls. So if you wanted this to say, you know, cast, for example, or credits, you can change that right here. And you also have the left and the right text controls here. So you can type in different roles, different names. And if you wanted to have multiple people assigned to a particular role, like for example, I'll just add an S, make this plural. We can just enter and that will create a blank space. And now it's basically saying these two people are both executive producers. Now, of course, we need to add another name here just to make it make sense. And that just animates on beautifully like this and animates back out. So we could stack these together and create a longer credit sequence very easily. Maybe in this last one, we'll say cast. So just a really simple way to create a very effective in credit title sequence. Okay, moving on to transitions. Take a look at this very first dissolve transition here. Now this one's cool because it kind of wipes across the screen and it blurs both of your footage as it wipes. Now, if you click on the transition, that will expose the controls in the inspector. So by default, it's set to this mask and you can kind of rotate this around. You can flip it around very easily like this. You can adjust the blur strength and you can even change the gradient here. This is 
basically the fall off of that mask. So if we stretch this out, then we have this softer mask like this. And you could also switch this to full screen, which will just blur each shot as it kind of cross dissolves. So kind of a nice upgrade from the standard cross dissolve that you see all the time. Take a look at this dramatic darkening transition. So if we drop this onto the next cut over here, you can see just like the name suggests, it kind of flashes into this darkness and then reveals the upcoming shot. And right over in the inspector, you can even control how many times it flashes. So by default, it's set to one, but you can go all the way up to three. And now you have three of those flashes. So just a really nice way to up the energy. I think it could work really well with some kind of thud sound effects and things like that. Now, I also want to show you the speed ramp transition. So just like the name implies, this one will kind of speed up your footage as well as give you this really cool flash. So another great way to up the energy could work really great for like movie trailers, things like that. All right, well, that's M Style Cinematic. It is available for DaVinci Resolve as well as Final Cut Pro on our website. Again, my name is Matt McCool. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.